From our Chicago studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Samana Siddiqui. Our top story tonight, at least 29 states have enacted nearly 100 restrictive voting laws in the last decade. A new analysis by the Brennan Center for Justice has found that many of these laws have clear racially discriminatory effects. Advocates say states are taking advantage of a 2013 Supreme Court ruling that overturned a law requiring states to get federal approval for changes to voting laws. Texas enacted a law in 2021 requiring voters to include their driver's license number or the last four digits of their social security number on ballot applications. That law disproportionately affected Latino, Asian, and black voters who are less likely to have either form of identification. Advocates say Congress must act to undo the harm caused by the Supreme Court decision. A new report released this week shows that fossil fuels accounted for more than 80 percent of global energy consumption last year. While renewable energy consumption has increased by 13 percent, fossil fuels are still the main component of energy supply. The report by the Energy Institute also found that oil consumption increased last year and global coal consumption went to its highest level since 2014. But it also notes the largest increase ever in new wind and solar capacity. Activists say the data is a clear call for governments to push more urgently for the transition to renewable energy. Editors and employees of conservative news outlet Newsmax have been served with subpoenas. The network is accused of spreading false information about the 2020 presidential election. Employees were ordered to turn over personal cell phones, emails and iCloud accounts to legal representatives working on behalf of election technology company Smartmatic. The subpoenas are part of Smartmatic's defamation lawsuits against Newsmax and OANN, a far-right cable channel. The lawsuits were filed in response to false claims made by the networks alleging that Smartmatic rigged the 2020 election in favor of President Joe Biden. If Smartmatic is successful, Newsmax and OANN could be required to pay millions of dollars in damages. A recent NBC News poll has found that 74 percent of Americans surveyed believe the U.S. is moving in the wrong direction. Only 20 percent believe the nation is moving in a positive direction. The poll also sheds light on voters' views on a possible face-off between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in 2024. Almost 70 percent of respondents expressed concerns about the health of both candidates. Biden is 80 years old and Trump is 77. About half of Republican voters say they prefer an alternative candidate to Trump. The poll also surveyed public opinion about last year's Supreme Court ruling overturning abortion rights at the federal level. Over 60 percent of voters disapprove of the ruling, while 36 percent approve. The U.S. has sanctioned two Russian intelligence officers accused of interfering in elections. The Treasury Department says Russian officials played a role in influencing a local election and distorting the poll process. Russian Federal Security Service officers Igor Sergeyevich Popov and Alexei Borisovich Sukhodolov were also involved in a global campaign against the conduct of elections, the Treasury said. Popov is accused of being the main contact of Alexander Viktorovich Oyanov, a Russian citizen. Oyanov was indicted in April in a U.S. court for election interference. Brian Nelson, a senior U.S. official for financial intelligence, says the Kremlin continues to attack free and fair elections globally. Four U.S. citizens in Florida were also indicted on charges of conducting an influence peddling operation and acting as Russian government agents in the U.S. The U.S. has charged four China-based chemical companies and eight individuals with manufacturing and distributing chemicals linked to opioids. The chemicals are used to manufacture the drug fentanyl. Fentanyl is an opioid that is much stronger than heroin and morphine. It is among the main contributors to the overdose epidemic in the United States. An investigation by the Drug Enforcement Administration led to the seizure of more than 200 kilograms of fentanyl precursor chemicals. The amount of chemicals could be used to produce a lethal dose for killing 25 million Americans. The defendants are accused of knowingly manufacturing, marketing, selling and supplying precursor chemicals for fentanyl production in violation of federal law. A controversial law proposed by Italy's ruling far-right coalition has raised concerns among the country's Muslim community. It aims to close hundreds of Islamic prayer spaces. Italy's 2.5 million Muslims and its opposition party have criticized the proposed legislation. The bill, presented by Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni's Brothers in Italy party, targets prayer rooms not recognized as mosques. Prayers would no longer be allowed in spaces not registered as places of worship. This also applies to various Muslim cultural organizations 
negotiations. Italian Muslim leader Yassine Lafram called the measure absurd and a violation of freedom of worship. The Union of Islamic Communities and Organizations in Italy said there were over 1,200 Muslim prayer rooms in Italy in 2017. Only six were officially mosques, and about 50 others fit into the authorization of places of worship. The rest were classified as cultural associations, but were also used as prayer spaces. The measure is now being discussed in the lower house of the Italian parliament. At least nine civilians were killed and 30 others injured in a Russian warplane attack on a market in Syria's Idlib de-escalation zone. The Idlib demilitarization zone was created after an agreement between Turkey and Russia in 2018. Local sources told Turkey's Andalou news agency the death toll is feared to rise further. The White Helmet Civil Defense Group say the attack hit the vegetable market in the Jisr al shurur district center. Witnesses say three Russian warplanes bombed the city center and a village. The Syrian regime and its allies have consistently broken the terms of the ceasefire by launching frequent attacks inside the de-escalation zone. Syria has been embroiled in a vicious civil war since early 2011 when the Bashar al-Assad regime cracked down on pro-democracy protests. The UN estimates that hundreds of thousands of people have been killed and more than 10 million others displaced. A special segment on Hajj and Eid al-Adha stories comes with details after the break, so stay tuned and we'll be right back. Muslims around the world are gearing up to celebrate Eid al-Adha, the second most important Islamic holiday. A small and large livestock market has been set up in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a. Residents are preparing to observe the festival of Eid al-Adha, or the Feast of Sacrifice. Turkey's Andalou news agency on Sunday reported Yemeni residents were bargaining for livestock for the sacrifice. Eid al-Adha celebrations begin in most countries this year on Wednesday and a day later in some places like Pakistan and India. Cows are arriving in the livestock market in Bogor in Indonesia ahead of Eid al-Adha. Located in West Java, Bogor has a large livestock market. People in large numbers are visiting the market to buy animals. Muslims globally celebrate Eid al-Adha by sacrificing livestock, including camels, sheep, goats, and cows. The festival honors Prophet Abraham's devotion to God. Salesmen prepare livestock put up for sale at Tarkinli Livestock Market ahead of Eid al-Adha in Mogadishu, Somalia. In the Pakistani city of Peshawar, hundreds of people filled a livestock market to buy a sheep or a cow to slaughter for Eid al-Adha. The festival will be celebrated in South Asia on Thursday. People arrive at the livestock market ahead of Eid al-Adha in Afghanistan. They are searching and bargaining to purchase animals at a market in the capital, Kabul. Traders say sales are stagnant and this is due to drought and the increase in feed prices. People, however, continue to rush to buy animals to fulfill the obligatory sacrificial worship. The bustling livestock markets in Idlib, Syria, signaled the approach of Eid al-Adha. Despite ongoing civil war and recent bombing within the de-escalation zone of Idlib, people are preparing to celebrate Eid. A large number of displaced people live in the region along the Turkish border. Livestock breeders have established markets in Idlib city center and the towns of Aldana and Ma'arrat Misrin. Eid al-Adha is a unifying occasion for Muslims globally. In Idlib, where people are internally displaced, the community comes together despite the challenges they face due to the ongoing conflict. The festival symbolizes embracing the spirit of generosity and empathy. Many Idlib residents donate a portion of their sacrificial animals to support those less fortunate. Let's watch a special report on the ritual of walking between Safa and Marwa during Hajj. Why are these men running? Running to fulfill a religious rite? What religion would require men to run? Not women and men, just men. These are Muslim men at the Hajj, the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca in Arabia. The Hajj or pilgrimage is a sacred rite for all Muslim men and Muslim women who are able to afford it and who are physically able to make the journey. However, during the pilgrimage, men are the only ones required to run between Safa and Marwa. Women may simply walk. Why is this? All of this running is to commemorate a mother's love a long, long time ago. 
mother Hagar, or Hajra, was the wife of the prophet Abraham, or Ibrahim. May the peace and blessings of God be upon them both. He settled her there in the barren, desolate valley of Mecca, and then traveled away. Hagar was alone with her infant son, Ismail, there in the desert by God's command. As their water began to run out, Hagar searched frantically for a well or a stream. She climbed to the top of Mount Safa, but to no avail. There was no one and no water. She ascended to the top of another hill, Marwa, but she lost sight of her son, Ismail. Desperate for water, but away from her son, she began to run between the two hills of Safa and Marwa, checking upon her son, Ismail, whenever she could. In total, she ran back and forth seven times searching for water. At last, water came. It is said she heard a voice and saw an angel digging at the ground with its heel or its wing until water gushed forth. Her prayers had been answered. She began to call out, Zamzam, Zamzam, contain yourself. And she gathered up what water she could into a little basin. Zamzam water became the reason that other caravans would stop in that valley. Mecca was born. Mecca, where the prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail, may peace be upon them, rebuilt the Kaaba, the first place of worship to God. Running the distance between the two hills of Safa and Marwa seven times equals approximately two miles. And so it is that the love of a mother, her desperate quest, her sincere prayers and tears, her walking and her running are the reason that now, centuries later, millions of Muslim men run in the very same valley where she ran. That's all from our Chicago studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Salam and good night.